Okay, guys, so moving from the forest inventory yeah, to electronic communication network. So this guy is going to present something interesting for us. Have the floor. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tomasz Turm. And I work for the Agency of, for Communication Network and Services of the Republic of Slovenia. And I can uh, admit I changed, I, I work in this agency for only the last two years. And before that, I didn't know that that kind of agencies exist at all. And now I know that every country in Europe has one. And I will show you what we have, the, that uh, we are using open source software to make spatial analysis to support regulatory activities. And we are basically an independent agency that we are involved in lots of uh, different aspects of regulatory uh, stuff in my country, like electronic communication markets. That's the department I'm doing, I'm working at. And basically we are, we are uh, regulating the telecommunication operators with the offers and the data and when they are doing uh, additional optic fiber lines and so and we are overlooking if they are doing everything by the laws and they are following the rules and the dates when something has to be done and in that manner uh, i will show you the uh, short video presentation of acos so we will understand what all the other regulatory agencies in other countries in Europe, they are doing pretty much the same stuff as we do. There's no sound, but <laughs> you can see. Uh, Yep, that's it, I think. So we can go back to the presentation. Um, how is it? Full screen? Yes, thanks. Basically, uh, you saw how many different um, fields we are covering. Those, this is like a summary of everything. Basically, those are the four main fields of activities. And I work in electronic communications and I will just show you how we set up the system and what kind of data we use and what kind and some of the results of the analysis. So basically all the story about broadband mapping, mapping in my country started um, years ago, long ago because we needed data to do analysis. But the most important year is probably 2012 when the agency together with the Ministry of Public Administration and um, the Serving and Mapping Authority, they decided that the telecommunication operators need to collect and give the data of network termination points. Do you know what is network termination point? Uh, basically, this is a location where the telecommunication, telecommunication operator has an equipment then the, then the customers can access to the internet. And this is basically, if you live in a house, it's one point and in the big buildings, you have also one point and many different uh, apartments and so on. So the year 2012 was crucial. And in 2013, there was uh, issued the general act 
when there is obligation for operators to give us the data, in, and if they don't, they get fined. And after that, in 2015, we launched the, the whole uh, broadband mapping system in the agency. We are using Postgres SQL, on Postgres on the top, Cookies and Cookies server, and all together gives us an opportunity to do good analysis to show the data to operators and general public. We use the special oriented data, only the attribute data, and this is basically the, all the summary of the tools we are using in this system. We have many um, Postgres SQL databases, basically at least three. One is operational, the most important one, it, it consists of almost 300 tables in 90 schemas. Uh, the other one is web database, just to, to we extract the data we need for the geo portal that is available to public. And we also are doing an archive database. That means, as, if, you see, if, you, if you look at the picture on the right, uh, I made a database of all the, for all the data at least twice a year, uh, so we can follow the progress of uh, collecting network termination point and building the electric com communication lines and so on. And we can easily then go back in history and see what was, how big was the difference comparing to today. Uh, in the database, we have data from many different sources. All of them, except central population register, are freely available on the web. So basically, we can say that in Slovenia, we are quite open source data society. Uh, that project started in 2015, when there was a law on uh, reuse of the data that were collected with the tax money. Basically, something like that. So all the data are freely available, uh, and some of the data we also are doing on our own, like the coverage of 4G, 3G, 2G, and the fixed broadband uh, coverage. We are doing something like that on our own, and we get the data from different in different formats, like shapes, CSVs, TXT, VMF, VFS, and we are using different techniques and approaches how to load all those data in the database. It, it takes about two to three days and all the data are new uh, and all the data and all the new data are in the database. So we are using most of the of the so of the code is written in SQL language. So this is basically the core of the system. Just writing the code and using it for the input data, analyzing data and so on. And we are also then using the similar, same tools for special analysis, like SQL is the main tool. Some of them is also made with DB Manager in Cookies. And some of the things are also done using processing toolbox. And here are, let's say, some of the results of what we are doing. In this picture, you can see the, the green municipalities are basically the, the areas. This picture is like, I think it's four or five years old. Those were the areas at that time where they, they had not optic fiber connection to the internet. And there was a state aid and the European aid to, to help the people who lives there to, so the operators did the electronic communication lines and network termination points. So the next one is we are collecting the download speed per uh, data, and this is just a picture so we can imagine uh, how are the download speeds in Slovenia in different regions. Uh, the next one is, let's say, settlement, settlements without network termination point. So basically, people live there, but they don't use um, internet connection at all, you know? If you, need, if you are on a weekend, that's not bad. <laughs> this one is settlements. It's different than the other one, where there, no one lives 
permanently. You have just like temporary settlement, and we can use that. This we can get from our data. This one, the yeah, average number of TV programs per municipality. As you can see, we have lots of programs, and if you look at the northeast part of the country, there is a border to Austria and Hungary, and there they have more programs than like in central part of the country. This is one of our own layers, mobile coverage of 4G, it's just an example. We also are calculating the 3G and 2G coverage, and it's very useful, uh, so we can the people just look at this coverage and they see if there is uh, some kind of uh, 4G uh, available or not. Here are base, stations look, base, base station locations, like this is 3G example. We also have all those data and these are the uh, necessary data as an input to calculate the coverage. But for calculating coverages, we are using uh, very specific uh, software and this software is not so cheap, it's quite expensive and it's not spatial software but the results that the goes out are spatial, spatially oriented. This is another one because we don't have, we, we are not allowed to uh, have the data from operators on a single uh, address, in that way we are using different grids like this one is 200 meters, and then we made the summarization on one grid cell, and we can then easily show the results, like a number of so service providers, or a number of infrastructure owners, because we have like four main mobile or telecommunication operators in my country, and some, um, all the others are small, but for a really big one, they cover the whole country almost. So there is a big competition for customers. And this year in May, I'm proud to say we published or launched GeoPortal. Uh, we have all the data we have in the database are shown to the public, so and you can go and see for your own home address what is the download speed, theoretical download speed, or if you are buying a house or apartment, you can check easily on this portal what is the internet connection at that address. But the main purpose was to reduce the cost of building very high speed networks so the operators can look one another, what they are doing, where they are doing, so they, that we want to prevent that every operator dig its own line, but one line for all of them, and then they hire the line for other purposes, like one is the main operator, national, and the one uh, has an option that other operators can hire his optic fiber lines to, for customers. And basically, uh, these are all the data you can uh, see in one place. Do we still have time? Uh, I'm Okay, uh, so there's a lot of different things like fixed mobile network coverages, all different kinds of electronic communications. And when we are doing some new analysis every year, our plan is to publish those results to public because, as I know, the telecommunication sector, all the data we are using, are so not widely known to general public, and I was so surprised what we are doing now. I didn't knew anything about that maybe two or three years ago, and we want to 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 make a step closer to the general public and to raise the awareness what they can do if they are not satisfied, let's say, with the operator or with the download speed, so they can press to the operators, maybe to us, because we have a quite a, big um, law department, so the public, they didn't, the people, they don't know, but they can uh, turn on us if they are not satisfied with the operator, and then we help the people to get what they uh, would like to achieve. And if we can go to the, oh, I miss mouse, but, um, Uh, 
I hope this will open. Yep. First, there is a disclaimer because we, it's written that we are not uh, responsible for any use of data because our, the data are public and we don't collect them, so they are just freely available. And after that, this is my country. And let's say if we um, go to some place. Oh. You can see, look, here are uh, the collection of network termination point located on the home address. And the different color, like yellow, it's a cable, blue, it's optic fiber, red is a copper, the black is uh, air connection. So. Uh, you can see for every location what is there available. And when you click on the home address, you see who's the owner of telecom of network termination point, what is the speed, what's the type of the the connection, what is the download speed, what is the type of the building, is it a residential or business object, and you can download those data from our portal because uh, it's easier than to, f you have to go to the survey authority, the web page, and then you, it's not so easy because here the data are already uh, adopted for the general use. And we also allow, if you want, uh, you can down, uh, extract the data for one municipality or just one settlement uh, as a all together. How many different operators, how many net termina network termination points, and how many cases of uh, electronic lines, and so on. And beside that, we are also showing the um, Uh, electronic uh, communication lines. If you click on one line, it will also get the data. Um, so, who's the owner? What's the? Uh, uh, how precise is the position of those data? And beside that, uh, we also put on the other. Uh, data like roads, uh, electricity lines, wastewater, gas pipelines, heat lines, water lines, railway lines. So basically, we, we try to offer to general public all the available data in one place. And basically, this is like the first portal in Slovenia that has this option for general public. And... Um, Say, uh, so here you see those are the locations of uh, base station 4G from one of the operators, but what I want to show you, this is something we did like last year. We made drive, uh, we made drive test. So that means that a couple of guys were driving around Slovenia. They made like six thousand kilometers, and they were measuring the strength of the signal of all technologies for all the operators around Slovenia. And now you can you can see on this map. Um, What was the uh, strength of the signal? The green color means that the signal of those locations for this certain operators are good, and the red line means that there is no signal. And because we are calculating the 
mobile coverage of certain operator and certain technology, now we can compare the theoretical calculation with the uh, results that were uh, measured in the field. This is the end. The last thing, but not least, uh, here are the data on uh, joint, joint construction. That means if there is a company that, build, that is building something like communication lines or wastewater lines or whatever lines, they have to apply to some portal and they announce in which settlement they will build something. So all the other uh, share stakeholders or all the other companies they see when where they are building and when, so they can join to them, so they can dig only once, not like five times or three times and so on. And nevertheless, we also offer the uh, option to make a PDF map of the data shown in the portal. For the general public, let's see. Uh, just to, if it works. Yeah, here you see the map of, with the legend and everything. So that's it. And I will just say the, the use of open source software gives us so many possibilities to basically do whatever we want with so not much programming. It's just the idea what you have to do. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, we showed this project in uh, some meeting in Brussels, in Poland, uh, and we are spreading the word because I think this is like state of the art of the geoportals in, in Europe for now. And we are getting new ideas from the public, we are showing them though that thing, so yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's, it's basically a, a huge repository of information that they produce in their systems and they just even like, is it, do you use case files to? Uh, How do they send it? They send XL, XML files to a uh, national server authority and they, care, they take care of uh, just basic uh, quality issues like if the XML is in the right, um, it's properly made and so on. Okay, so you have a national standard? Yes. Yes. Is it RSS or is it, uh, is it uh, static? The data that you're getting from the, from the operator? Uh, now the data, we are getting data like three or four times a year, two or three times a year, so it's static. But we are now making a project uh, that, that we will get only the, the changes on a daily basis, basically, so in real time. So and hopefully and we will finish it before New Year's Day. And the, the companies can provide this information real time? Uh, no, basically it's when they do some network termination points or other stuff, they have three months after they finish their job. In three months they have to report the, the new data to survey authority. Yeah, just just the changes. Yeah. Yeah, but that's like the business. What what is the what what is the business plan? Where the money come from? Uh, yeah, big agency. We take care of uh, not material stuff like we sell numbers, phone numbers to the operators. We we take care of the frequencies for the TV, radio, and now the digital uh, frequencies and so on. And the, the users, like uh, operators, have to pay for use of uh, frequencies and numbers and so on. And we, this is our main 
uh, funding. Yes, they pay for the, uh, for the numbers and frequencies and so on, and they put the data in the database, but we are not so strict uh, if they don't follow the, the, the dates and so on, because we, have to, we must have the good relation with the operators. Yeah. It's a, some kind of win-win situation in the end. No, uh, the, the user interface is made in .NET technology. Yeah, but behind that is GeoServer. Yeah. Okay, GeoServer. Yeah. yeah.